Okay, welcome back. We are doing another fair value through net income example, and this time it's for bonds. So you can do um, a fair value through net income for bonds um, as well as the uh, amortized cost. So basically, what we're doing is we're going to set up the bond table like we did before and that will take care of our entries for um, when we get our interest so for our cash and how we break it down but then with fair value net income you're also going to every year end or period end whenever you do your statements um, mark your bonds to fair value okay so we need a table, and then we're going to mark the bonds to fair value. <coughs> okay, so we are on page 6 of chapter 9. <coughs> so January 1st, 2015. I'm sorry, I didn't change these dates to be more recent. Um, so 15, 16, this 2021 should be 2018. And 2020, 2017. Hopefully, oh, sorry about that. 16, and this should be 2017. Okay, so there's the typos I've got. Should be 2017, 2018, and 2017, 2018. I do it by replacing the dates, but sometimes I don't start early enough. So that's what happened. The 1415 didn't change. 1415, but 17, 18, and above did change. That's why it worked off. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, let's look at this. On January 1st, 2015, Pronghorn Limited paid this much for 12% of the bonds of Variation Limited with a maturity value of 312. So what does this tell you right now? He paid 335 and the maturity value is 312. It's going to be a premium, right? Okay. So let's, and this is the face value. Like we talked about last time. Um, unless it tells you eyes round to the nearest dollar. Twelve percent is the stated or coupon rate. And maturity value. So the bonds provide the bondholders with a ten percent yield. That is the market active rate. So the market or the effective rate. Now they're dated January 2015, mature on January 2021, and pay interest each December, so just once per year, or annually. Now, if they, if they paid this, what is this? That's the present value. So do we have to do any calculations? No. We've got all the numbers. Um, we might have to calculate the interest, but that's it. But we don't need our financial calculators because this is the present value. So they acquired the bond investment. It's part of its portfolio of trading securities, just like equity. It accounts for bonds right here. We'd have to tell you that. And reports interest income separately from other investment gains and losses. So we'll call it interest income or something. Um, at December 31st, 2015, the bonds had a fair value of 33350. And we apply IFRS 9, which means we have to use effective interest amortization. Now, during 2016, the economic outlook related to their primary business. So the debt was downgraded. By the end of 2016, they were priced at 85.5. So how do we do that again? That's a percentage, right? That's a percentage. So we take 0.855 
times the face value, so 312, which is 'cause I didn't calculate it. Oh, there it is. Two six seven sixty. Now you don't have to do that there, I'm just choosing to do it while we have it in our mind. And December 31st, 2017, they're selling on the market at 87, so that would be 0.87 times 312. And conditions reversed in 20, that should be 18, sorry about that. It's 2018, reversed in 2018. And the outlook significantly improved, leaving their bonds with a fair value of 995. 18. Okay. So prepare part A, prep the entries to record the purchase of the bonds on January 1st, 2015, recognition of interest income on December 31st, 2015, and the fair value adjustment December um, 31st, 2015. Okay, so part A. What we need is a bond effective interest schedule. So we're going to have the date, we're going to have the cash. This is just like the one we did on the one. We're going to have interest revenue. Now, we already saw maturity value is 312. We paid more, so it's a premium. So it's going to be premium emission. And then the carrying value. And we need to the end of 18, so we're going to put one here, 401, 01, 15, and December 31st, 15, when the interest payments are. So when we sell it, and then the interest payments are. December 31st, 16, December 31st, 17, and December 31st, 18. Okay, so... Let's put the interest rates on. Is the cash going to be the 10%, the 10% or the 12%? We're going to get what's actually stated or the coupon rate. So this is always going to be the cash. Sorry, I'll leave that there for a sec. So this is always going to be 12% or the stated rate. And the interest is going to be 10%. Now, do you see why that bond is giving 12% every year? Everybody else on the market is roughly averaging out giving 10%. So would we pay more for the bond that gives 12% every year? Yeah, we would. So that's why it's a premium, okay? This is bigger, so it equals a premium. Okay, so the very first day, sorry, I should have left us a table here. I don't know why I didn't. Okay, um, let's do the red. 
So the carrying value at the beginning is going to be 35655 because it was a present value. Okay. Now we don't do anything else here, but so I'll just put little lines here. Okay, now December 31st, 15. How much cash are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 12% times what? The 335, 312, or what? Times the 312. So, that's going to equal 37,440. Now, is this going to change? No, nope, it's the same all the way down. Now, how do I calculate the avenue? I do 10% times 312. No, nope, times the carrying value. So remember, this goes down here, so we're looking here. The carrying value times 10%. And that equals 33566. Okay, remember the amortization is the difference between the three and the three. And that works out to 3874. Now, this is the question. Do we want to add it to the carry value or subtract? What has to happen as this goes down? The CV increase or decrease? Well, decrease to 312. Okay? So, we subtract. So it's going to be subtract. Three eight seven four equals three three one seven eight. So you go ahead and finish filling this in. Just put this on pause, and then you can come back and see how you did. back. Yours should look like that and hopefully I haven't made any. So just pause it if you need to take some time and copy it or hopefully you're just checking your numbers off and you did perfect. So once we've got this table done we need to record Jan first the purchase of the bonds. So we're going to debit, investment in bonds, FVNI, and sometimes uh, Plus doesn't put the bonds, debt or equity, it'll just put investment, FVNI, uh, just like when it didn't put the company. So we paid 335655. Obviously, you guys, if we were doing this in real life, we'd put all the cents, and this would have cents and so on. But um, you don't need to for this. Check on Wiley Plus. Sometimes they want you to go to two decimal places. Okay. So that's our January first entry. So now we're going to do the entries are going to be the interest um, payments and marking to fair value at year end. Okay. Keep this handy because you need your chart. And you will go to page 7. Okay. 
It's good to keep a little running total of the investment. So we'll do that over here. And we will start with the 335655. So we already did the entry for um, the purchase. So now it's December 31st, 2015. We're going back in time and we get interest. So looking at your chart, are we getting cash or giving cash? Well, this is an investment to us, so we're getting cash. So we're going to debit cash for 37, 4, 4. So that one's easy. The question is, what do I do with the interest revenue? That's a credit. Interest revenue or income doesn't matter. And it is 33566. Six, six. Just so you know, just to prepare you for 316. Um, we don't always buy bonds on an interest date, so if we don't, like let's say they gave interest in March and uh, six months later than March, two different months, something like that, or even just March, we would have to prorate uh, the entries. Don't worry about that now. When we do bonds, when I, I won't be with you, but when you do bonds next semester in 316, 